this is meteorologist Mark Molnar, and I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Hurricane Northeastern, part two, second edition. It takes us through the midpoint of the summer, through the rest of the summer, all the way through the fall to November. Will this be a 2005 type year? Well, many of you in July here have been waiting for what seems like an eternity for my update. And I promised you I would update you with my updated numbers for the rest of the season. This takes into account the total season. Take a look at the English alphabet. Yes. We're already at well, midpoint of the way through the summer and we've made it through a good portion of the alphabet here. Already having a first hurricane in July here. So taking a look at the particulars, let's get that hurricane out of the way there. And guess what? We are going to see 23 to 26 named storms. I don't think I've ever, ever forecasted this many storms in a season. We've got to go all the way back to 2005 to get well into this range. Of course, 2005 was even above this because it was a pretty unprecedented year. Seems like it would have never ended. But 23 to 26 named storms. This is much higher than my original 18 to 19 named storms I had in my original forecast back in May. So that takes us into hurricanes. 12 to 14 of those, I believe, will become hurricanes and about seven to eight of those major hurricanes. So this is nothing to ignore. Even if you're not into tropical weather, you're going to want to stay tuned to the season. Don't, don't dig a hole and crawl in it and just bury yourself and try to ignore this. This is definitely nothing to ignore at all. This is something you're going to want to stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of storms and some of these storms could be occurring simultaneously. So similar to what we had in 2005, where we, it, it was very common to have sometimes three or four major storms going on at once. So this is the ridiculous part. And some of you are probably cheering this on. Some of you are probably like the, living along the coast, like what the heck? This is, this is horrible. Look at 12 named storms in an average season here. These are the normals on the right, comparing them to what I'm forecasting. We're literally destroying the normals here. So, look at this. This is where we get into the analogs. We're right around the midpoint of the summer here, and of course, we're somewhere between neutral and a very weak La Nina. We're right in that 0 0.3, 0 0.4 Celsius on the ENSO scale here. But as you look, we're pretty much going to stay just slightly negative here. We might borderline weak La Nina by mid to late fall here and heading into early winter. But guess what? For the most part, we're going to stay neutral. That's what's going to keep these storms just on a trajectory for strengthening. And you combine that with a lot of positive sea surface temperature anomalies, and you're going to get a situation, a recipe for disaster here across much of the Atlantic Basin. Now, whether these storms hit land or not, that's all dependent on the local flows and jet stream and highs and low pressures at that given time. So that takes us through the rest of, we're pretty much assured that the analogs here are going to support a very active season all the way through fall here for hurricanes. And I'll have my winter outlook out. We'll get into that in about, a, would say a month and a half here. We'll get into that. But let's get through the hurricane season here first. We get into what I think has been really contributing to the sea surface temperatures in the pattern. Across much of North America, we have had a pattern here with a big old Bermuda high off the East Coast. We've had a lot of heat and humidity. Now, a lot of you probably, every day you wake up, it's like low, lows in the 70s, highs into the 90s. And that's been pretty much the rule all the way up into the Northeastern part of the US into Southeastern Canada and across much of interior America as well. And that has translated across much of the Atlantic too. We've had a lot of high pressure cells, a lot of fair weather. The sun, that strong sun this time of year has beat on those oceans. And believe me, I'm gonna show you the sea surface temperature anomaly map and it's gonna be full of bright colors because this pattern has led to extreme amount of, in, many of you are probably wondering they're living along the East Coast here and inland. 
This has got to be a, having an effect on the oceans, and it definitely is. The oceans have greatly warmed here out in the Atlantic, Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. So this pattern, this summer-like pattern, many of you are probably wondering, it's been a while in the Northeast and Southeast Canada since you've seen temperatures on this scale, just 90 degree or better every day, a lot of 95 and 100 degree temperatures as well. So here is the sea surface temperature map. This is where we have a lot of those sea surface temperatures getting, and this is really gonna factor in. You see a lot of oranges and reds here. That's one, two, two and a half degrees Celsius above your average here. And we, we got a little cool pool out here towards the Azores, but that shouldn't really affect us too much because we're gonna get most of our activity here, as I'll show you on the next map of popular storms for this year's tracks, Cape Verde. But here, all the way across portions of the Caribbean islands, Caribbean Sea, Gulf of Mexico, and then up along the ocean current here, the Atlantic Loop, all the way up the east coast of North America, above average. So if any storm can hold together, you might want to watch it here in eastern New England. You're well overdue for a major storm. Not saying one will happen this year, but you're well overdue by a couple decades for a major storm. So there you have it. The east coast and Gulf of Mexico and Atlantic dealing with, in some cases, in many areas, bath water. And that is spelling disaster when it comes to some of these storms that form later in August and September, because some of these will form into really major hurricanes. And that brings into another account the whole wind shear factor. Now, let's take a look at the trouble areas that I'm expecting across the Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico, and Caribbean. Out here in the Atlantic, as I said, the big area that we've been seeing a lot of development, which will continue and strengthen, is the Cape Verde season. I do not think that's dying down anytime soon. Here across the Caribbean, Caribbean islands, I think this will be a year where we break the trend of having a bit quieter. And I know places like Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, you've been well overdue for a major hurricane. And I think this could be the year where we get some sort of storm that either develops or traverses across the Caribbean here. So that's why I've added the Caribbean to the light to moderate range here for potential development heading into later August and September. And then the Gulf of Mexico. I believe the Gulf of Mexico is wide open for business here, and I've put most of the Gulf of Mexico in red at this point, as well as the Bahamas, the southeast coast of the United States offshore here, and up to portions of eastern New England uh, and Nova Scotia here. This is where we could potentially have a lot of these recurvatures as the high pressure, the Bermuda High, continues to expand unusually westward, which may help Bermuda for a lot, because I know Bermuda has been getting smacked by a lot of hurricanes in previous years here, in recent years, but that might help to push some of these storms closer to the U.S. East Coast, becoming dangerously close and stronger with those sea surface temperatures. So we put those storms into motion, and that's where we get all of these trajectories that come into play. Now, of course, eastern Canada, Nova Scotia, you're no stranger to hurricanes. You've had Category 1 and Category 2 hurricanes strike southeastern Canada as well. So, eastern New England, continue to watch because things could potentially go downhill if we get some sort of storm that makes a beeline up the U.S. East Coast. And this high-pressure cell, Bermuda High, out in the central Atlantic, continues to strengthen. And it doesn't show any signs of breaking up. Now, there is some troughiness that has come down across the Great Lakes into the Northeast, but that, those are temporary disturbances that come down. For the most part, the ridge will continue here across the eastern part of North America. So there you have it. Gulf of Mexico, Bahamas, East Coast, Cape Verdes, and even portions of the Caribbean. Now up here in the Northeast Atlantic, in recent years, you've had pretty active here across the Azores. I think it will be actually a little bit below average up here, so you get a little break. But most of the activity will be in areas closer, unfortunately, to land here in the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and U.S. East Coast. A lot of this originating here from the Cape Verdes. And I don't expect too many other Saharan dust outbreaks here. So that's pretty much subsided. So there you have it. That's what we're getting into this hurricane season. It's going to be really interesting. So I will continue to update you as we progress through this hurricane season of 2020, which it seems like everything this year is a bit on the 
extreme ridiculous scale, so to speak, in many aspects of our life. So, I hate to be the bearer of bad news for many of you, and of course some of you are probably welcoming this because I know there's a lot of tropical weather fans that have been waiting for a year like this since 2005 for a long time. But that takes us through the hurricane season of 2020. And keep in mind, those numbers are in addition to the numbers we've already had. So we're looking at a record-breaking year here, and I will keep you tuned here at Meteor Mark's Hurricane Northeastern. As always, I wanna thank you for joining me, and I want you to give my social media pages some love as well. Please, get out there to my Facebook page, my main page where I'm getting people to like more, Hurricane Northeastern on Facebook. It's two separate words, as well as Medio Mark, that's my main page, Weather Northeastern, as well as Twitter at WX Northeastern. And don't forget my websites, MediaMark.com and WeatherNortheastern.com. And I will continue to update weekly on the Hurricane in the Tropics tropical update. As always, thank you for joining me at Hurricane Northeastern at Medio Mark. Thank you.